Oh, <laughs> hey everybody, uh, didn't see you there. I was just chair flying some of my attitude instrument flying skills. Well, what are we talking about? When we talk about attitude instrument flying, we're defining that as control of the aircraft's position in space using just the instruments rather than outside visual references. Hey, welcome to the Epic Flight Academy and our instrument rating course. I'm Mike Thompson and we are so glad you're here. Now remember to be successful in the course, you're going to want to, number one, study Epic's online course material and the related references. Number two, watch these videos. We're so glad you're here watching these videos. And number three, of course, review this content with your flight instructor. So what about this attitude instrument flying? Rather than referencing the world's natural horizon, I'm now controlling the aircraft's position in space strictly by reference to my flight instruments. Now, that is a pretty good skill to have. You're gonna master it before long, and that's gonna open up a whole new world of instrument flying. When you start to master these instrument skills, there are three fundamental skills we want to get at first. Take a look at our slide right here. The three fundamental skills are instrument cross-check, instrument interpretation, and aircraft control. So, number one, I have to develop a scan in such a way that the appropriate instruments are included for whatever it is I'm trying to do with that airplane, such as take off, land, turn, straighten level, etc. Now, it's not enough that I just scan the proper instruments. Number two, I have to be able to interpret those instruments accurately. What exactly is that instrument telling me? How do I interpret that? And then number three, once I've cross-checked it, once I've interpreted it, now I transfer that into actual aircraft control. This is the technique of moving the aircraft based upon what those instruments are telling me. So let's dig into instrument cross-check in a little more depth. Now, I want you to think back to basic straight and level. VFR, IFR, either way, just basic straight and level. There's three primary things a pilot is always concerned about. Altitude, heading, and airspeed. Now, if you take a look at this slide, you can see pictures of the old six-pack instrument panel. And as I fly this airplane, I see my altitude in the upper right, that's my altimeter, very concerned about that. Heading, straight down, right below the attitude, there's my heading, and airspeed, upper left-hand side of the panel, Altitude, heading, and airspeed. Now, notice on the old six-pack, that's why the attitude indicator is directly in the center of the panel and the center of my vision. It is the one and only instrument that gives me two pieces of information at the same time. What is that? It gives me bank information and it gives me roll information at the same time on one instrument. So I put that right in the middle of my basic three. Altitude, heading, airspeed. And what's going to happen is I'm going to start to focus my scan on that attitude indicator, come to the right to the altimeter and back, left to the airspeed and back, down to the heading indicator and back, and I'm making a letter T. The letter T, that is the basic instrument scan. Now, you can see here on the slide, we have what we call the rectangular scan. 
Your instructor will work on that with you for other specific situations. We also have the inverted V scan that is also for particular situations. The in inverted V scan we use if we suspect a vacuum pump failure. And we want to include the electrically driven turn coordinator in the lower left. That's what the inverted V scan is for. So that basic T scan then leads us to, and you can see number four on our slide, what we call the radial hub and spoke, or we just call it the radial scan. And you can see in the bottom picture here. The radial scan focuses on the attitude indicator and then just radiates out to the various instruments as a cross check and back to that attitude indicator. Now, take a look at this slide here. This is a close up of what Garmin's G1000 looks like. If you're flying the 172S model at beautiful epic aviation in New Smyrna Beach, this is the instrument display that you're going to see. Notice it still follows that basic T, which leads to the radial. The attitude, right in the middle. Immediately to the right, there's the altimeter. Immediately to the left, there's the airspeed. Straight down, there's the heading. So I still have my basic T, attitude, right in the middle. The radial scan is designed so that your eyes can remain on the attitude indicator 80 to 90% of the time, and the remainder of the time is spent transitioning from the attitude to other various flight instruments. Now, as we talk about scanning and we talk about controlling the aircraft on instruments, it's very important that you study these references specifically, and you can see it here on the slide, we are looking at the Instrument Flying Handbook. That is the FAA's Handbook 8083.15 Bravo. And we're looking specifically in Chapter 6. Now, as you start to develop these scanning skills with your flight instructor, it's very likely that you may exhibit some common scanning errors. How do we know that? Well, <laughs> because we all did, folks. And sometimes we still all do if we don't maintain our proficiency. Now, the good news is the FAA and your flight instructor are very familiar with these errors. And we know there's three in particular. The first one is called fixation. This is the tendency to stare at one instrument and negate the rest. For example, it's not uncommon for a beginning instrument pilot to stare at the altimeter. Well, we know, don't we folks? We're supposed to hold a constant altitude, and we tend to stare at the altimeter. That causes us to fixate and negate the other instruments. Omission is another common error, and this is when we leave a particular instrument out of the scan. For example, we're climbing out, and we may include the pitch attitude from the attitude indicator, and we may look at the vertical speed indicator, and then we may start to omit our scan of the airspeed because we want to climb out a specific airspeed. We might start to omit the heading indicator and drift left or right. This is omission. And then the third scanning error is called emphasis, or we say that for fun, it's emphasis. And what emphasis means is we're checking one or two particular instruments much more readily than we are checking the rest. For example, in that climb, <clears throat> maybe we decide, oh boy, I don't wanna omit the uh, airspeed indicator. And I end up now putting too much emphasis on that airspeed indicator. 
when my scan needs to include all of the relevant instruments. So folks, this is what's going to get us started in basic attitude instrument flying. Review these uh, scan techniques and work on mastering these common errors and develop yourself a beautiful instrument scan. We'll see you next time.